Good evening, everyone. Um, can you hear me at the back? If I put on my lecturing voice um, and not use a microphone, thank you. Um, good evening. My name is, is Anne Smith. I'm the acting chief executive of the of Carbon Zero Holdings, which looks after the CMAS and Carbon Zero certifications. Um, I'd like to extend a really warm welcome to all of you for coming here. Um, it's a great turnout and lovely to see you all here enjoying this networking event. Um, I'd like to thank Countess Manica for hosting the event, Dave and um, Debbie Wilson for doing all the, the hard work and hosting, hosting this evening. It's really a super event. Um, and I have to say we're really, really delighted to see such a, um, a prominent organisation as Middlemore Hospital and such a large and complex organisation able to go through the program and come out the other side with um, a certification. Um, I'd also like to thank Yalen's Wine for providing the wine this evening. We, we've got a great number of wineries who are in our program and they're, they're, they're very forward in, in coming to um, host our events for us and, and uh, sponsor the wine. It's a, so the delicious wine we've had this evening is all from Yalen's. Um, and if you don't know the Yalen story, there's actually a great radio clip from Country Life from about two weekends ago on national radio, so do go and have a listen. Um, I've got some housekeeping to deal with. Um, so first of all, toilets are just behind um, these big doors, but you obviously have to go out and around. Um, there are, almost all the doors have got green exit signs if you need to get out. Um, coming from Christchurch, if you <coughs> do you do feel, start, feel a bit shaky, drop, cover and hold, wait for instructions. <laughs> Um, we, we, we're very good at practicing that from Christchurch. Um, and if you've come by car and you've come in and parked and you've got a parking ticket, um, there are some vouchers here for you to, to get out again without paying. What you do when you go to the machine is put the ticket that you took into the machine, then this one, the machine will swallow this one and give you back the one that you put in so that you can get out through the gate. Um, so do come and collect those um, from one of our team. Um, we've got a number of team members here tonight. There's Josephine, put your hand up. Um, Alex. Alex is here somewhere. Um, Chris Thurston. Um, is Andrea here? Andrea. Andrea is here. Andrea and Sebastian. So do watch out for our team members and uh, do chat to them. Um, I'm going to give you a little introduction about CMARS and Carbon Zero Program, who we are, what our credentials are, and then I will. Um, present the certificate to, uh, to Margie um, and then I'll hand over to David and um, Debbie to tell you about their story and what they've done to, to get this, this certificate this evening. <coughs> um, so I'm going to set one side of Chris to direct this for me. But I'll need to see what's coming. Okay, so um, Carbon Zero Holding, uh, Carbon Zero Holding is a um, a subsidiary of Landcare Research. So Landcare Research, Crown Research Institute, owned by the New Zealand government, and uh, they are our owner. So we're one of the first examples of spinning out science to become a commercial entity coming out of the Crown Research Institute. Um, we actually report into the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Business, Innovation and Employment. Landcare's got nine locations throughout New Zealand, 380 staff, and, and we actually look after their footprint as well. But um, so they're actually, for the first, big, now that we're a subsidiary, we have actually been allowed to certify them. So this year is the first year that Landcare Research has been Carbon Zero certified, even though they've been measuring their footprint for more than 10 years. Um, because while we were part of them, we couldn't. Um, next slide, please. So the Carbon Zero program, um, we started as a certification program in 2006, and we now operate in five countries. Um, in New Zealand, Australia, the United Kingdom, uh, Chile, and the United Arab Emirates. So, strange mixture. Some of it's in the States, but um, some of it's in, um, part of our strategy. We have over 280 clients, um, and we, we have four locations. Um, four locations in New Zealand? Three. Three, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have, we have an office in, in Lincoln, near Christchurch, we have an office here in Auckland at Ian Parnell and, and we have a, a small office in Wellington as well. So we have staff stretched across the, the three main cities. 15 staff, 
and as I said, we're 100% on bottom internal government. And this year, as a, a, a spin-out of land care research, we've actually had our first ever set of um, accounts audited by Audit New Zealand, and we've done our own footprint and had that externally audited as well. So we now report our footprint separately from land care research. And, and we really pride ourselves on walking the talk. Whatever we ask you to go through, we put ourselves through as well. Um, and we try to do it first. Um, <coughs> Um, some of the statistics, um, there's a few I can talk about that aren't up there as well. We, we, we've issued, since 2006, we've issued over 870 certificates, um, measured over 78 million tonnes, verified over 78 million tonnes of footprint. That's actually more than New Zealand's annual footprint that we, we've actually measured and verified. Um, and offset over 300,000. Um, tons of, of emissions through carbon credits, um, and roughly our clients have, have reduced roughly around 1.2 <coughs> million tons, and that 1.2 million tons is, is probably about six million in savings. Um, and if you look across Australia and New Zealand, we actually have um, provided accredited certificates. Um, we actually hold 95% of that market across Australia and New Zealand. Um, and largely because we're the first, we've helped to develop the whole area of expertise. Chris. Okay, so our credentials. Um, we are accredited by JASANS. Now, JASANS is the joint accreditation system of Australia and New Zealand. It's owned by the two governments, and it, it operates, they operate as a joint entity under the Trans-Tasman Treaty, and they're part of an international network of government accreditation bodies called the International Accreditation Forum. So that's quite important to our clients who are exporters because it means that our, our certificates and our logos are recognised in all the 50 economies. And that obviously is really important if you've got that on a, an export product. product. Uh, so we were the first uh, program in the world to be accredited under um, this ISO standard, ISO 4064, um, that's the standard that we use for measuring <coughs> footprint here. Um, so it's simply a standard for quantifying and reporting your greenhouse gas footprint. In the UK, we've been licensed by the Environment Agency. It's the largest <coughs> regulator in Europe. Um, under the UK Climate Change Act, we're licensed as being equivalent to the Carbon Trust Standard for the purposes of our UK clients to report into the UK compliance scheme, um, which is a pretty big deal. We were also the first to be recognised in that way. And recently, we were also accredited by the Carbon Disclosure Project as a, a standard suitable for reporting into the Carbon Disclosure Project. And the, the Carbon Disclosure Project targets listed companies around the world and challenges them to disclose their carbon footprint. Um, so New Zealand's actually lagging behind quite badly in, in that at the moment. Um, but in countries like the UK, over 80% over of listed companies actually disclose their, their carbon footprint. And we, we're now qualified to look after companies that want to do that. And this just gives you an indication of, of how we've grown. Um, so we bought it, we actually started operating as a certification body in 2006, around right about the middle of that graph. And you can see we've grown year on year. And the graph at the end of 2012-13, that's, that's actually at the six month point. So you can see we're projecting to uh, way exceed last year's results again this year. Um, so, that's, so that's really fabulous and we're really proud of that achievement. And that achievement comes through clients like um, Minimal Hospital who are working with us. Um, so we have a, a great family of certified clients that we really enjoy working with and it's thanks to them that we're able to show these sorts of results. Last one. And we're really proud this year we've been able to celebrate um, a whole host of, of clients who have actually been in the program for five years or more. We actually celebrated last night with Christchurch International Airport their sixth year in, in the program. And that's, that's pretty awesome. But, um, we have something like a 94-95% a 90, retention rate of clients, so they really stick with us and, and get a lot of benefit from um, the program. Um, and also, but they, they join us for all sorts of reasons. They, they come into the program because they feel it's the right thing to do because it's part of the culture of the company. Um, they join because they want to find cost savings through things like energy efficiency. Um, they come because 
Um, they've got an overseas owner who demands that they're reporting their carbon footprint, or they're part of a supply chain where, where players in the supply chain are asking for their carbon footprint data. Um, so we, we can cater for all those different reasons for companies to come into the program. So that's our, our little story. Um, just a, a little bit about how the program works, just in case you don't know. Uh, so any, any company working with us to become certified, first thing they have to do is measure their, their carbon footprint. And that means collecting all of the data for a 12 month period of the things that create greenhouse gas emissions. So that might be electricity use, the fuel use in vehicles, the waste that goes to landfill, um, use of couriers and freight and things like that. So we gather up all of those emission sources and those are then turned into carbon dioxide equivalents, so tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, that, that actually creates the footprint and then companies are required to look at that footprint, what, what are the hot spots, the, you know, the top emission sources and identify projects that they can implement that will reduce those emissions. So the aim is to get a good baseline and then to work towards reducing that baseline year on year. Um, and over a five year period, we like to think that our clients would reduce their footprint for roughly on average by about 2.5% per year by that five year mark. And that's lined up with things like New Zealand's target for reducing emissions, etc. And, and effectively, once those two pieces of work are done, the footprint and the management plan, then a third party audit comes in, puts, puts, puts you through your paces, checks that you've collect all, collected all the right data, collects that you've done the calculations right, checks that you've got the, the, all the points that we need in the management plan, that comes back and then you issue a certificate and um, allow them to use the, the logo. So that's what Counties Medicare has gone through. So I've got a really great pleasure now to present the certificate because Counties Medicare has just achieved certification. <laughs> I think we're finding out who's going to So, you know, it's something for us to think about. 
And um, now, in terms of our staff, I want to acknowledge some of the staff who have also been involved, and particularly Greg Simpson and the engineering department, John Black. Can you two stand up, please? <laughs> so you're involved. Well, uh, it is, as I said, the beginning of a journey. Thank you all for coming tonight and thank you for your commitment to this direction of travel and we look forward to exciting improvement of the future. Thank you. Thank you. My job was actually to introduce no, Dave Gell. It's my purpose in life. Oh. <laughs> um, my name is Marty Upper and I um, bring apologies from Gary Martin, our chief executive, and um, want to comment on um, add to Gregor's um, support for our staff. Um, after the board decision in March, we, um, all we really had to do as an executive team was to put together somebody like Debbie with the energy and the passion and um, to make this work. But actually this has been a grassroots movement among our staff and I want to acknowledge that. And when Geraint um, posted a blog about going green in March last year, he got an overwhelming response from staff who said, um, actually, this is something that's really important to us, that, um, in fact, one of our staff members said that we don't make it easy to recycle. In fact, I take my team's bottles home to recycle because it's not easy to do it in our workplace. And so it's been a really simple process of actually allowing our staff to bring forward the creative ideas, the innovation, let people like Debbie and David bring them together and make it happen. And so we do want to acknowledge that this is a very much a grassroots movement. How proud we are as an organisation to support that. So thank you. Thank you. It's, a, it's a great evening for us, but we recognise it's only the beginning of a, a long and hard journey. But, but first of all, can I just welcome you all here? It's a great pleasure for us to have you come to this gorgeous place, Kuala uh, counties Monaco Hill. Uh, for some of you, uh, this part of the world may not be all that familiar. It's terrific. You get a sense of the diversity of our people on that slide there. <coughs> uh, I'd particularly like to thank um, uh, the Carbon Zero team for the support they've given us. Uh, and also wish to repay some of the great hospitalities I've hosted at organisations like the Museum of Auckland, who have been particularly helpful to us, uh, Bridgestone Tyres, and of course BMW. And the, being the BMW event last year, boy, that was a goodie. Um, <laughs> people got to drive new models of BMW cars. I mean, it was absolutely incredible that that option was available. Uh, not so lucky here, unfortunately. So <laughs> uh, we can offer you a, a, a weekend free of even breathing in the intensive heat. <laughs> totally relaxing. <laughs> by some of the best nurses in the country and some of the best doctors, I'd like to say. Um, the uh, lucky winner of this prize uh, will be randomly selected, drugged and dragged away <laughs> at the end of this meeting. So, it was a, it was a particularly small uh, group that started this, and um, thank you for the acknowledgement, Gregor, of uh, those people who were involved at the beginning. But they were backed up by quite, a, we were all backed up by quite a large group on email. And I think there's already a network within this organization that are going to make this a very successful program for us. Um, when we started, we weren't quite sure how to do this. You know, uh, Jackie had been to an event at a daughter's school and came fired up into my office, and Debbie and um, Catherine Hocking, who we need to acknowledge too. Catherine, you're here, aren't you? Yeah, there she is up there. She uh, was one of us two at the beginning. Um, got together and thought with Clinton, what are we going to do here? And um, we kept on looking for the road in because there seemed to be so many different routes into this whole area of sustainability. We read widely, people were sending us stuff, you know. Yet the road that we took was right in the middle of us and it came in the form of Josephine's twin sister, Natasha, who was the um, charge nurse on our heart dependency unit. And how strange it was that sometimes, you know, you can keep on looking for something, but you know, looking for the things you want to find when the thing you're really looking for is right in front of your eyes. You know, quite a good lesson for us. Um, I think this public commitment by the District uh, Health Board is quite important, um, and I'm sure they recognise that people will be holding them to that in the future. And we'd like to think that when it comes to the redesign of our buildings and the redesign of our services, 
sustainability will become a lens that those decisions will be made through. Um, I just want to flip through. Um, of course, um, you know, the business of um, sustainability and climate change and global warming, for some reason, is still controversial in some people's eyes. Uh, perhaps this is part of the reason for that. This is a, the headline from the front page of last week's Guardian Weekly, which talks about the hundreds of millions of dollars um, that corporations around the world are, putting, are, are funding carbon skeptics with you know, a lot of money to try and disabuse the science. Um, but of course, you know, this, the most important pie graph you'll ever see in your life, <laughs> refutes that. Um, there is undoubted science behind climate change and humans' contribution to global warming. Um, the good thing, I suppose, uh, for health is that almost everything that we do to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and healthcare delivery is also good for health outcomes. And there's lots of examples of that, and I'd just like to introduce Dave Grayson here, um, who leads the 20,000 Day Campaign, which is about returning 20,000 days that were in hospital admissions through new models of care, those people are being better managed in the community. Each one of those days in hospital carries a substantial carbon footprint. Dave did a calculation for us the other day based on an NHS template. What was the number, Dave? Can you recall? Was it? Well, the, the, the estimate of your footprint for, for a bed day, so that's a measure of how long somebody's in a bed in the hospital, I think it's 80 kilograms carbon. So 20,000, oh, we were up to 13 now, we're 13,000, so we're counting, you know, as you would expect. So, so it's, it's substantial, so. Um, but just looking at this graph, which comes from the NHS Sustainable Development Unit, um, thinking about um, energy use, if we actually change the whole district health board, turn to become, to use renewable energies entirely, it would only reduce our carbon footprint by 22%. Procurement is a huge issue, and I know there's a, a few people from procurement here and from companies, and it's this kind of stuff that we're talking about. You know, this is a simple 10 mil pre-packed um, syringe of saline. You know, it's extraordinary that it should come with this little plastic wrapper. It's like uh, you know what's happening to chocolate fish in this country. You know? <laughs> but every single item that we use has its own carbon footprint, and I think we need to be quite conscious of that. Um, the real gains um, and, and, um, for, for us as a health board and as a health provider are in prevention, designing more patient-centered models of care, uh, developing lean pathways of care, and actually for the district health board to think, that lo think about low-cost carbon options uh, in every decision that they actually make, and it needs to be factored into every single one. Now, what I'd like to do, uh, and that's, the, that's where we'll end up, there's no question about that. What I'd like to do now is just introduce um, Debbie Wilson. Debbie Wilson was uh, a nurse educator in our intensive care unit who's absolutely passionate about sustainability. Uh, she has been the drive uh, and uh, the reason why we've got to where we are tonight. She is our sustainability officer here at County Monaco Health now. And Debbie has what I call that X factor, uh, which is serious pulling power, you know, that actually through her drive, her enthusiasm, her enormous energy, and the team that she works with, with Alan and the crew, you know, uh, you know she will pull us along, and uh, I'm quite confident that with her doing that, we will be successful in what we need to do. So welcome, Debbie, thank you for all the work. Tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per bed. Uh, 
and we did actually include MSC in our calculations, that brought the total to roughly around 20,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. You have to just say what MSC is. Oh, yeah. forgive me, Manukau, so, well it's the Manukau Health Park, which is the Manukau Surgery Centre and Super Clinic. It's an outpatient department plus an inpatient, a smaller satellite service, not too far away. Thank you. So if you want to think about what 20,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide actually means, you can think about it's actually equates to 60,000 footer passenger flights from Wellington to Auckland, which is quite possible. Or travelling 65,000 return trips in a vehicle from Wellington to Auckland, what you couple it to roughly 16,000 households, generating an average figure of 8 kilowatts per hour. Pretty big, which is quite good because we do want to reduce it. It would have been quite disappointing for a minute small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about what this means to us now, actually I held um, an environmental information stall in Middlemore for you for four hours earlier on and a lot of our sustainability crew came along as well. And there was 80 people that actually came and spoke to me from on the mm -hmm. were very keen to um, put them to ourselves forward as champions, and actually put some comments down suggesting how we can improve things. And this is one of the things that the physiotherapy department are doing, the respiratory physiotherapy department. They're actually taking turns to take their recycling home every week, they've got a little roster. They've been doing that for quite some time. So I think it demonstrates that people are really keen to actually do the right thing. So we need to improve our waste management. That's one of the things that we're going to target. And if you think about energy, um, that's just a picture of some of the posters that we had up and developed. Um, one, of the, one of the people who came just found it quite frustrating that people don't even turn their computers off at night. And actually, when we're working with White Amount to DHB quite a lot, and they've um, introduced a, a computer sleep system, which has saved them $200,000 per annum. So actually, exploring that avenue here as well. And then if you think about transport, that's another target area for us. Um, one of the quotes that's really impressed with our locker room, I'll explain this. We've got a, a quite a, um, a nice locker room and facilities for cyclists because we're trying to encourage people to, to cycle or to use the trains. The trains are just outside our doorstep and reduce the um, amount of cars that come here. And actually that's a picture of one of our technicians and he's admiring our fleet bike. We've also got a fleet bike that you can book out. So you, rather than booking a car, you can book a fleet bike. Don't forget to try that, guys. We've got that to the end of March. But be careful. And we'd also like to acknowledge this isn't the fleet bike. <laughs> but we don't actually want to reinvent the wheel. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we the DHB. We've got a sustainability officer there that we're actually talking with quite a lot and trying to learn from. And there are many others within the region and the nation. We'd really like to get together and generate a, a network. We've also joined the Global Green and Healthy Hospitals Network, which is an international coalition of 400 organisations. So we're going to be learning from them too. And of course the UK with the Sustainable Development Unit, their, their streets ahead in many ways, so we can actually learn from them. I think we might be working with them on their own map to try that as well. So that's it really. I'm just going to say thank you very much. And great to see so many people here. And I'm going to introduce now to Josephine. <laughs> Fantastic and, and great to, to come back here, here again. My sister no longer works here. She's fleeted off to Zurich, followed a German guy. But um, it's great to be back at the hospital. And, and I know that for the four years that she was here, she said you know, there's, a, there's huge grounds for people wanting to be behind this project. So it's great. So yeah. So that sort of ends the formalities for tonight. Um, and I'm sure there may be some questions, but we've obviously still got to drink and food next door. So please do feel free to. To grab a drink and um, Dave's introduced, I think most of the team are here, so you've got facilities and all sorts of different departments, so please do feel free to, um, to have a chat with them with any questions, and um, I will hand over to Pitty Order and all the Thank you.